Today I'm going to show you how I made a really subtle corner LED light, absolutely perfect for a living room, bedroom or conservatory like this. That's the light. That's not. That's a banana plant. So this is our conservatory and it's joined to our kitchen and it's a room that we use all the time, including the evenings. And the problem with that is that the spotlights in the ceiling are very much either on or off. If they're on, it's just too bright in here and if they're off, it's just too dark. So when we first moved in, I installed these theatre type lights that I had in my store just to put in the corners and give a little bit of colour and a little bit of ambient lighting. And although they worked out fine, they're not really suitable for the job. And it's timed I upgraded them and did something a little bit more permanent. So these are going to have to go. And what I'm thinking of doing is installing some LED strip lights, but starting with a base of ply in this corner. And then fixing a 2x2 two two timber somewhere in the middle here that I can route out around the back and then install the strip light that then projects on these walls and I see a bounce of colour from these walls. Uh, this is going to be maybe a metre and a half or 1.4 metres high. But as I was just planning this, and I've just got my bananas back in here ready for the winter, I was thinking that actually, if I put this back a little bit into the corner, then I could also make a stand for plants in here that would also stable the base for sure and hide some of this woodwork. This I'm going to paint white to match the skirting and the shelves in here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it dual purpose. I'll make it as a stand for a plant in the front. Push this post back a little bit. The plant will hide some of this and it will still be able to bounce off of these walls and give some sort of ambient light. I think what I'll do as well is double up the sheet of ply at the bottom to make it thicker and that also means I can hide some of the cables as well. So I think I need to take some measurements and go and start cutting some ply. I've decided the base plates need to be 470 millimetres square so I found some spare leftover three quarter inch ply and cut it slightly oversized. And then spent a bit of time trying to work out exactly what I was going to do and the best way of getting what I wanted out of the ply that I've got. So while I think and ponder all about this design, let's do something useful and I'll tell you all about the lights. So the strip lights I'm going to be using today are these from OYA Smart Lighting. These are very standard LED strip lights which are bought from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. And they use 50-50 LEDs. That means they're around 5mm square and there's 30 per metre, so they're not going to be super bright. But I'm actually wanting it for ambience rather than brightness. If I really wanted it bright, all I have to do is turn the main light on. So hopefully they're going to be bright enough. I actually went for the USB powered version for two reasons. Firstly, it means that the box I have to hide in the base of the light is a little bit smaller, which makes it going to be easier to hide. And secondly, it means that the cable is white and everything in my kitchen is white including the walls and near enough the floor as well. Most of these packs have black cables and that means that I could also use a USB charging plug, the sort of thing you get on your iPhone, just fitted in the wall to power it. From the charger the cable goes to the control box which as I said I'm going to hide in the base. Then it goes out to the red blue green string of lights but it's also got this other little cable coming out which is the infrared detector, which picks up signals from the remote control for colours and brightness or all the different settings as well. Which means that these two need line of sight. So rather than being tucked underneath the base of the light, I'm somehow going to have to drill a hole and poke this out so these two can actually work together. This also works off of an app and for Alexa, apparently, but I need to really read the manual and they actually give you the smallest manual in the world. And not only that, when you get to the part where it talks about pairing up, they also use 
the smallest font in the world as well, which means I'm gonna to have to get a magnifying glass or ask my children what that says. So all of this gubbins, I wanna hide in the base of the light, except for this little bit that has to poke out. So I'm thinking that this could go in the bottom section of the ply, maybe if I cut it or route it out deep enough for this to sit and maybe get glued in. And then this can just go up the wall and go into the socket. So I think I'm gonna to have to offer this up to the ply and then maybe do some routing. My original plan was to laminate two full sheets of ply for each light. That means I need four of these. And then to route out the bottom sheet so I can fit in this wire and this gubbins as well. Now I'm gonna to have to change that uh, for two reasons. First of all, I haven't got enough ply. <laughs> I thought I've got enough, but I haven't. I've got enough square meterage, but I haven't got enough ply to give me four sheets of this size. I can only have two, and I need them full on the top so that it's nice and flat. But what I can do is, with the strips that I've got left over, I can laminate glue and screw around the perimeter. I've already cut this 10 mil too big, so once that's laminated on, and it's gone off. I can trim 10 millimeters from the perimeter through both sheets of ply, which will give me a nice flat surface to finish off with. The back two faces aren't so important because they are against the wall, so you're never gonna see those. And ironically, that gives me a void around this area, which gives me more flexibility to put this in and play around with the wires and the lengths of the wires. Rather than routing it out, I've just end up naturally with a void. So, because I've got a lack of ply, that's what I'm gonna to have to do. So that is very satisfying, cutting through two thicknesses of ply that have been glued and screwed together. So you cut through 36 millimetres means that what, however good you line them up to start with doesn't actually matter because now I've got a nice perfect 90 degree cut on two sides. And those are the two sides that you're ever going to see. Underneath is a little bit hollow but that's where my wires are going to go. So the next thing I want to do is on the front face here, I'd rather than leaving it as a corner. I really want to put a curve just in case when people walk past they may kick it. So I just want to take off the corner and I thought I'd put it on in the same sort of radius in the same position as those planters that we saw earlier just so it sort of matches up. Now there's various ways of doing it. You could actually use a jigsaw but using a jigsaw you always end up with a rubbish cut and the chances of it ending up vertical is well I've never been able to do it so I'm going to actually use a router and a number of passes so at least I can get halfway through and then maybe use my router table with a different type of bit just to finish off and I was thinking that I would have to put a plate on here and have a pivot point but what I've found is that this uh it's a guide that came with the trend router. If I sort of turned it around and mixed it up a little bit, it gave me a, quite a nice hole here and the correct radius of the cut that I want. So I'm going to try this. It might not be perfect, but it saves me having to build something for it. So let's give it a go.
So while the filler is curing before I can finally sand those base plates and give them the first coat of primer, I'm going to turn my attention to the posts that the lights are going to be fixed to. And I've got one here that I've used on another project. This is two by two planed all round. I think it comes down to about 43 millimetres square. And I've obviously used it for something because it's not 1.8 or 2.4 high. But it's just about the right height. I want it about chest height. Waist height is too low and up by your face I think is too high. So I'm going to cut another one exactly the same length as this, which I think is about 1.35. And then I'm going to put lights on two faces. Those are the two faces that actually shine against the corner of the wall. Now there's two ways of doing this. Obviously all of these lights that you get come with adhesive backing and you could just stick them. If I painted this I could then just stick it to the post and hope that it never comes off. But unfortunately the adhesive on lights like this is never particularly good. And with uh, contraction and expansion in the kitchen, at some point that's going to give and it's all going to fall off. So I've been playing around with a router bit because I've just measured this and it's exactly 10 millimeters wide. And I've got a router cutter that's 9.5. So if I cut a slot in uh, the post what I've just found is I can then force this in without even using the adhesive back in and that does two things that means that firstly that will never ever come out unless I rip it out and secondly it means that if you look down the side of the post you won't actually see the LEDs because they're slightly just inset in so I think this is the method I'm going to be using so I need to do the same a route out a shallow channel on two faces here so I can put the light starting at the bottom up and then drill a hole through and then all the way down again and then I can fit this to the base plate. I route a shallow channel down the post from the bottom all the way up to about an inch or so from the top not going all the way. I thought the top I would cut at a 15 degree angle to both faces just to make it look slightly different and after 30 years of using mitre saws this is probably the first time I've ever done a compound cut for a project. With a hole drilled in the top of the channel from both sides linking them this will allow the LED strip to go up one side and then through and down the other. Using a piece of offcut, I mark out the size hole I need for the post and cut with a jigsaw, which was a bit tricky because I've got different levels here now on the underside. I purposely make the hole slightly undersized so I can gradually file it down so I can get a really tight fit. Before gluing the post in place I fix the lights to it as these also need to go through the hole in the base with the post.
gave the post some time to get some strength on the base and then I drilled a hole so I could poke out the infrared receiver so it can talk to the remote control. So that's now fixed in place. And on the other side, I put a couple of extra strengthening pieces which I glued and screwed next to the post to give it a more, bit of more strength and hot glued in all the electrics and put some felt pads on the bottom so it doesn't scrape on the floor. So this is now finished. So let's go and see what they look like in the conservatory. And this is what it looks like at night. And I think it came out really well. Obviously you can have different colors and different settings and it can flash. My favorite setting is obviously the disco setting where it comes on and flashes every time it hears some sort of noise. So all you need is a little bit of music and I'll see you next time.